Hi everyone, our subject today is scrotal swelling in pediatrics. Basics, scrotal swelling is not uncommon chief complaint that may present acutely or gradually and may be painful or painless. A perfect onset of painful scrotal swelling necessitate immediate evaluation as we mentioned in the previous lecture of scrotal pain. Some causes of painless scrotal swelling may be worked up non-emergently. Lesions primarily to the scrotal content, the scrotal wall or skin or the inguinal canal may initiate scrotal swelling. History Simple scrotal hydrocele, commonly seen at birth and frequently bilateral, communicating hydrocele, history of variation in size, tends to become larger as the day progress due to upright position. Inguinal hernia must get bigger with the crying bowel movement and increased abdominal pressure. Vomiting or abdominal pain may indicate strangulation or incarceration of the hernia content. Varicocele is typically asymptomatic but may present with the dull, aching, scrotal pain or heaviness. Exposure to the allergen, pruritus, generalized swelling or edema. Physical examination, if pale scrotal swelling transluminate, consider hydrocele or spermatocele. Simple hydrocele transluminate may be tense, large hydrocele may extend to the inguinal ring. Communicating hydrocele, attempt to compress the hydrocele. If a fluid drain into the abdomen, patent processes must be present. Spermatocele, disconnect mass separate from the testis, transluminate as a cystic mass. Inguinal hernia, swelling extend along the inguinal canal and into the scrotum. Palpating the hernia sac over the cord's structure may be similar to that of rubbing two layers of silk together. This is silk glove sign. Varicocele, typically left-sided, painless mass above the testis, which is known as to the bag of worms, that disappear when supine. Testicular tumor, very hard, non-tender testis palpated within the testis, does not transluminate. How to approach to the acute scrotal swelling? Uh, after performing history and physical examination, if it is a generalized, if there is generalized edema, uh, please see the previous lecture of the edema. If it is no, there is no generalized edema. Is there pain, as we mentioned in the previous lecture? If it is yes, it's, there is a significant trauma. If it is yes, this is hematocele, hematoma, testicular rupture, epididymitis, torsion. If there is no significant trauma, is the testis tender? If it is yes, this is maybe torsion of the testis, epididymitis, orchitis, torsion of the appendix, which is late sign or tumor. If there is no tenderness of the testis, this is torsion of the appendage, hernia, incarcerated, inoxial line purpura, and Kawasaki disease. If there is no pain, is there a large testis? If it is yes, this is tumor or attenuated uh, antenatal torsion, uh, this is uh, in the neonatal period. If there is no enlargement of the testis, it is reducible swelling. If it is yes, this is hernia. If it is not reducible, is there scrotal wall swelling? If it is yes, this is idiopathic edema, hinoxial line purpura, and Kawasaki disease. If there is no edema of the scrotal wall, is it transluminate? As we mentioned, if it is yes, this is hydrocele or hernia with hydrocele or spermatocele. If it is, does not transluminate, this is either varicocele or hernia. This is another approach, scrotal swelling, painless of course, after performing history and physical examination. Either it is extra testicular or testicular. If it is testicular swelling or uh, enlargement, patient need ultrasound, serum tumor markers, beta HCG, alpha, Fetoprotein, this is testicular tumor or testicular microlithiasis. Or it is extra testicular enlargement. 
either scrotal wall edema or swelling differential diagnosis, idiopathic scrotal edema, insect bite, hinoxial line purpura. Is it solid mass patient need ultrasound? This is soft tissue tumors, adenomatoid tumor, paratesticular rhabdomyosarcoma. Is it cystic mass patient need ultrasound with or without referral to the urology? This is inguinal hernia, hydrocele, hematocele, varicocele, spermatocele, and epididymal cyst. Is there dependent edema? This is nephrotic syndrome, protein losing, enteropathy, or liver failure. Top tips. Virtually all hydrocele are congenital in a neonate, neonate and infant. In a mobile child with the hydrocele, the size characteristically increased during daytime and decreased over nighttime. Spermatic cord hydrocele is uncommon and result from abrasion in the closure of the process vaginalis. It is a located fluid collection along the spermatic cord separated from the testis and epididymis and located above them. Epididymitis is the most common cause of scrotal swelling in sexually active young adolescent. This is uh, an ascending infection from the urethra. Idiopathic scrotal edema, ISO, usually uh, caused by allergy, may mimic torsion. The scrotum is uh, swollen and red in ISO. There are no symptoms and the testes characteristically feel normal and not tender. ISO often extend to the groin and perineum. Parents can be reassured that the swelling will disappear within a few days without treatment, leaving some purpuric discoloration. Varicocele occur in about 5% of all adolescent boys and is a common cause of subfertility. Antenatal testicular torsion in a newborn, as we mentioned, a newborn boy may present with a paleish smooth testicular enlargement that is usually dark in color with a minimal or no edema of the scrotum. This presentation occurs in 70% of cases. The remaining cases occur postnatally during the first month of life before fixation occurs. Salvage of the testes after neonatal torsion is rare and therefore the management is controversial. Red flags. In the normal scrotum, 1 to 2 ml of serous fluid is present in the tonica vaginalis and should not be mistaken for hydrocele. Acquired hydrocele can decrease the effectiveness of spermatogenesis by causing atrophic changes due to increased pressure on the blood supply of the testis. In addition, tumors of the tonica vaginalis may be obscured by the hydrocele hence the need for rapid treatment. It is critical to determine whether a scrotal mass in, uh, is intra or extra testicular. The majority of the intra testicular mass are malignant while the extra testicular mass are usually benign. Thank you for your listening.